Today I'm going to spend some time on the intake manifold. So here I have it just resting in place. It's not all the way seated down on the head or anything yet. And um, it's hitting the brake booster. Actually, the real thing it's hitting is that, that vacuum nipple on the back. It's uh, hitting, hitting the clutch line. But, um, and then, but it's also hitting the, the reservoir. And it's, you know, essentially the brake booster and everything is in the way. So my current thought is to shorten it by two and a half inches. So I'm going to make two cuts along those lines there and then try to weld it back up into place. And hopefully that will give me the clearance I need to tuck that nipple in just on this side of the firewall on the other side of these fuel lines. And uh, that should hopefully clear the the reservoir here. So let's um let's get sawing. All right, so I've put just one bolt holding that that one side on. I um, made sure I cleaned it out really well so that no metal shavings fall into the the intake there, the engine. But uh, I think I'm totally onto something. I think I'm totally happy with that. It's clearing the alternator. I think I can get an elbow uh, around there for the intake and then have the throttle body maybe in this area. Um, I've got clearance to the brake booster nipple. On the back side, that nipple's pretty close to the firewall. I might have to trim that. So let's see, or maybe, yeah, I wonder if I can relocate it. I wonder if I can use this nipple for the, uh, the brake booster. Or I might be able to just give this one a little bit of a bend if I heat it up. I might be able to just curve it a little bit. Or there might be enough clearance there to get a, just a little silicon hose to wrap around that. So my bandsaw joint came out pretty decent. Um, there's a few little gaps and stuff, and, and it's not perfectly square, but it looks otherwise like it's, it's a pretty good match. So I'm just going to spend a little time on the belt sander and sand some of the high spots so I get a little bit better of a connection there. So after belt sanding, I then took the die grinder to both parts to clean up the insides and the outsides of the, uh, the ends that I'm going to weld together. Uh, just because cleaner metal, of course, especially aluminum, cleaner aluminum welds better. And even then it's not super clean, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. I did take one of the leftover end pieces and uh, did a test weld on it and I'm uh, pretty happy with the results. I adjusted the machine a little bit. Uh, I was getting a little bit of melt through, so I, um, I turned down the heat a little bit, and I think I'm going to be able to do this okay. Um, I noticed that the seats for the fuel injectors have a 17 millimeter hex on them, so I'm like, oh, well that must mean surely they unscrew. So I put a hex in it and turned it, and it actually broke apart. So they do not unscrew, um, but they, it'll probably get hot enough, they'll probably melt, or uh, I'm, I will probably have to figure out how to get them out and replace them. I do see they have part numbers on them, so uh, hopefully um, they, I'll be able to get a new one or new ones and, and put them in. So let's, uh, 
Let's get loading. So here's the manifold all welded up. I'm actually really pleased with how it turned out. I feel like I got um, welds all the way around, relatively clean. Um, there shouldn't be any air, uh, any air seepage. And uh, even though the whole part got pretty hot, it doesn't look like any damage happened to the other um, fuel injector ports. And this one actually I was looking, I think the O-ring seals on the inside. I'm still gonna see if I can replace it, but um, um, anyways, there you have it. But I think if, uh, if you're doing welding on your own intake manifold, uh, you probably don't have to take those out or worry about them. It's amazing. It's been about half an hour and it's still, it's still warm. And then here's the underside. Looking inside each port, it looks, uh, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with, there's no, like, welding kind of blow through or anything. There's a little bit of a step because the diameters of the of the pipes are a little different where I cut it. Or because there's a little bit of taper, but I think overall that's gonna be just fine. Through the, the throttle body opening too, you can see uh, see how the welding looks. And again, a little step, uh, but I think there's not that much I can do about that. I suppose I could probably get a really long Deeper, a little really long burr tool for the die grinder and reach in there, but I'm uh, just going to leave it the way it is. And the best part is it, uh, it fits really well. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm happy with the alternator clearance, and I think I have enough room here to make a flange and an elbow coming off for the throttle body. Uh, plenty of clearance with the brake booster. Um, the firewall, the nipple is just clear the, the firewall there. Um, I think that's that's good. And again, I might I might take that nipple off or cap it and just uh, use this one on the side for my uh, for my vacuum for the brake booster. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a it's a good fit. You know, I've I've lost a little bit of bottom end torque by shortening the runners, but. Um, that's okay. I think that's the least of my problems.